Good morning, channel friends. Hello there. Today we are in our new office in Castellamonte, the new headquarters, the boss's office. You know we were left over there and he came to the new place over here. Actually, we are 200 men apart, but we seem so far away. How long has this office been here? Almost a year. But we hardly use it because we just stay over there and this wall has been waiting to be painted for a year. Actually, it is the classic plasterboard wall because here it was divided. It was very big. This is part of an old kiln. Over there, there is even a ceramics kiln. And being very large, we had to get a hallway and said, well, it's the right time to do a tutorial and let people at home know how to paint a new plasterboard. It was even grouted with a rough filler because I wanted to look as nice as the other walls, which are original and rough. So it has been filled with a rough putty. And I want to give you the chance to understand how to paint a wall like this with magic wall. So without applying undercoats or primers, you always say to me, Elisa, the decorator I usually go to, tells me that it is essential to put a primer. Elisa, the paint shop I usually go to, always tells me that without primer, it won't hold. But if you use Magic Wall, you don't have to listen to what other companies' guidelines say, because they are different. Each product has its own guidelines, and rightly so. If you use the help of a decorator who is used to using other products, you must ensure that he follows our guidelines. So use the products as we teach you. It is essential. This is an innovative product. It is our magic paint product. There is no other company. People also told me that it is a paint like every other paint, simply branded under another name. It's not like that. Magic Wall doesn't exist in other sizes, colors, or names. It's our unique creation, so you must follow our guidelines carefully. But there's a surprise. Yes. Because this morning we are the decorators, the painters. Painters. We will apply the base, the background, a neutral color that will be the base for Alessandra's decoration that is about to arrive. But I bothered her a little later. She will arrive after lunch. Let's prepare the base. Let's start. <laughs> soft and thick brush should be used on this wall. A brush that has a nice long bristle. Which is why I do not recommend the other two magic wall brushes, the Damon and the Carla, but you should use the Merlino. It's a brush that has a slightly longer bristle. It's been used a few times with blue and brown, showing slight wear, but it's still soft. We handle brushes well. So remember, the longer the bristle, the less you struggle on rough walls. Now, I know many of you use the roller, the Magic Wall Sponge Roller is not suitable for rough walls. Some of you, however, tell me that they use the roller with the hair, the kitty, Alessandra calls it. The Pile Roller, in my opinion, does not work best with Magic Wall, but if you want to try, go ahead. It's not Elisa who can tell you not to do it. Clearly for me, a good brush stroke, in this case textured, as we will do today, a bit messy, is a bonus. So, take a good look at what we do and copy it fully, because I promise you, if you want to do a small wall like this, you'll take an hour. So, a very thick brush with a good reservoir that captures a lot of color. I stir so that I fill it in well. Stroke the edges so I make sure I don't squish it and I keep as much of the color inside as possible. You see that it is full of color. This way you won't burden the wrist, you'll avoid struggle and you'll paint well without leaving marks. If you squeeze it, it's a mess, okay? Now I'm going to go here and see how well I cover with just one coat. So shape plasterboard, not done very well. They did not put that much effort into it, to tell you the truth. Look at the partition here, a coat of rough putty, and I achieve a full coverage in one coat. No primer. You have to understand that these are the basics. When using magic wall on surfaces like this, the last thing you have to do is prime because primer doesn't let the wall breathe. And there could be bubbles of moisture in the walls. Some people have put primer and then found themselves a month later with thermal change, having to burst the bubble because there was water caused by humidity, some terrible things. 
Okay, so watch out. You don't need any other primer from other brands under Magic Wall. Can you help me? Look at how it covers. I recommend one coat, well applied. You see, I didn't pull too hard. When the brush tank is empty, that's it. You should not overburden, because if you pull too much, then you will be forced to apply two coats, and there will be a waste of money. If, on the other hand, I am gentle in the application and don't pull too hard, one coat is enough. Another thing to consider, look, I definitely did not go there. Instead, I moved close to where I already had my color patch. Because this is what's truly important, be sure to avoid the creation of patches and continue evenly. I started here and I'm moving forward. I go near the brick. I'm very careful not to stain the brick because in this particular case today, it's a little bit more complicated to cover it, so be careful. You can use the Architetto brush and carefully do the edges with it, or just be a bit more careful. Obviously, I don't have a very straight and smooth wall here. It's an old building, so it's perfectly fine for me to go with a large brush. However, if you have a very precise straight wall, you can easily use the Architetto brush, which is slightly cut and is very precise for angles. So besides the skit, hello, welcome back. If you have never seen her, she is Alessandra Elia. She is a very good professional. What did you study? I prefer not to say it. I went to the scientific high school. But after that, I pursued cultural heritage conservation. I then fully recovered in a second phase. That said, you learn art and then set it aside. So keep in mind this tutorial, like all the other tutorials with Alessandra. Keep them in mind because they are very useful. She is a very good decorator. Moreover, she came here today to give a special touch to this wall on which Emma and I have already applied a single coat of magic wall, Julia's Grey, a very beautiful grey that I love. A single coat on a plaster wall without primers is enough, right? Yes, absolutely. So, we're starting with a textured base. You've told me roughly what you want to do, but I still don't know exactly what you'll do. Actually, I don't know it either, because you must know Elisa does this. She tells you what she wants, but only half of it. She says she wants something here, but she'd like something ancient, yet a bit contemporary. You'll see that it is not that easy. Because the secret to having the artists, let's say, free, happy to work, is not to tell them what they have to do. So let them do it in peace. You just have to create something that looks good here. All right, let's move on. So we start by putting this on the tray. We use the leftovers. We create a base using some matterit cream and some color to provide what kind of structure exactly. We'll provide some texture to this wall without moving too far away from the base color, so we will use the materic cream with a little bit of Julia's gray, which is the color we have already applied here, to create a light gray, a tone on tone. This is because Elisa was asking me for a contemporary wall. So by staying with shades of grey, we will definitely give it a more modern accent. But if you want to try to do the same job while getting a more deeply antique effect, I suggest you might want to use a Delice or a Rocher, adding a bit of vintage. The mix of colours greatly determines contemporaneity. So is it possible to do something contemporary with a classic style? Of course. Okay, let's move on. Take the leftovers and tell me how much you want. You can go by feeling, by now we know that here there are no such things as doses. For an entire wall, we'll surely use this jar plus these two bottoms we have. It's very little. Yes. But it is to make you understand that everything is needed and nothing is ever thrown away. Beware of one thing, 
Putting the magic wall inside the methyric cream will obviously make the mixture a little bit more liquid, just a little bit. But a very nice thing is that since the magic wall has resin in it, it will also make it more resistant and it dries less quickly because it slightly extends drying times. Also because matric cream dries very quickly, right? Sure. If the first dose you make at home is not enough, it's not a problem, you can do it again. If it doesn't come out exactly the same, it's not a problem for this type of work because it makes sense that an ancient wall is not exactly the same color in all spots. You did well to point out because we often go a bit by eye. I am a bit stingy and I meticulously clean the jars. You can go ahead with the recipe. So let's go ahead and add just a little bit of Julia's gray to ensure we don't have a completely white wall, which would indeed be out of place. Well done. Let's start like this, and then perhaps we might consider adding some more or not. What do you use to work? A spatula, right? Yes, I take a spatula and start to stir. We are using an old tray, but a bowl, a plastic plate, anything recycled will do. The tone is actually very, very contemporary. Let's also say that it lightens a bit as it dries, but the wall has its definitive color. So you can already understand, more or less, what is the lighter tone compared to the wall, but always remember that as it dries, it will definitely lighten slightly because the materic cream is white and prevails. So shall we start? What do we use to spread it on the wall? We will use a spatula to smooth the surfaces, which will help us in doing this work. So we take the putty, put it on the spatula, and start doing this. We spread it unevenly, leaving some portions exposed. And then we just pull it until the putty is worn away, like this. You see that you reach a point where there's no longer enough putty on the spatula, and so it already creates this texture on its own, which is very interesting. We should fill in some areas more, while it will be nice to leave others as they are, very fragmented. I take some. Let's connect. Remember that as long as the putty is wet, it is workable. So if you also want to actually work it a bit more, remember that you can do this until it dries. Well done. Indeed, I see that we are coloring it. In my opinion, the trick is not to show where it begins and ends, but to see something homogeneous. Yes, indeed. And then another trick is, at least it's a personal choice, but I don't like it when you can clearly see the trowel mark. So... If it turns out the way it turned out for me, there's no problem. Let's take a bit more filler. Let's not start from here, because if I started from here, I would immediately fill an area that is already full. I do this job instead. I start here and finish on an area that was already full. In this particular way, I carefully create a break, and the clear, distinct mark that was once there is no longer visible. It's beautiful. I let you work peacefully, Ali. When we do this kind of work, we must already have the end result in mind a little bit. So we think of filling in some areas, but others we deliberately leave open. We say in technical terms, 
also because the material is not the last step in our work. It is a base on which we are going to work, so it is right to leave some areas more open and others fuller. I proceed and continue along the entire wall. is not yet completely dry and we are using this to our advantage. Let's create two colors that will blend well with the wall underneath. Will you help? I'll help. We will prepare two contrasting colors because, as we said before, we still need to create an effect that is antique yet also contemporary. So we take advantage of color theory and use two colors that complement each other. In this case, we use the Lucky Forest and the Madame. We lighten them slightly again with Julia's gray, so that we create a shade that does not differ too much from the wall below. So we have two trays. Do I start with green? It's okay for now. And a bit of Julia's gray. In the meantime, I'll stir it a bit so it mixes well. How much? It's okay. How much will there be approximately 80 grams of color with two tablespoons of gray? Yes, more or less. I think the green is perfect. And what about this? I would add a little more lighter. Yes, a bit. Okay. Colors are ready. All we need to do is start with our stencil. This is called Damasco Elegante. It's a stencil that we're going to use with two colors. We're not going to do it on the whole wall because we have to give it this worn look anyway. So to do the whole wall and then sand it down would be useless. We might as well just stick to a few areas. In some places, I have already covered some decorative elements that are not needed in this case. I wanted to create a slightly lighter motif. So you too can modify your stencil as you prefer. Shall we start? Yes, indeed. We can just hold it by hand without paper tape. Well, I placed some. It doesn't bother anyway. Dry sponge roller, I don't wet it first because I want to create a very drained effect. So I take a little color and unload it well on the tray. I also carefully apply light pressure because I genuinely don't want to achieve a uniform effect everywhere. I want the stencil to be seeable and unseeable. Okay, now we will move over here. Okay. Do you see it's very light? I overlap the lily, if we can call it. Like that, and we proceed. Look what I do now. The roller is the same we have already used, drained. I haven't picked up more color. I'm going to use what I already have. And then I want to create a connection with this. It would be too obvious to do this decorative motif, madame, and this one lucky forest. By doing this, where we slightly color the base with lucky forest, 
which is the color we used before. And then we proceed with the other roller, always dry. I carefully take a little bit of color, drain the roller well, and I go here, over the lucky forest that I had applied before, always in a very fractured way. And I proceed to create a harmonious mixture between the two distinct colors. Do you see how they blend perfectly? And I do everything in one step. I don't reposition the stencil twice. Let's go on the other side. I continue with the roller still loaded with the previous color and also add a light touch of green. carry on only in some areas while others will be left completely rough. While it's drying, I would like to add a color glaze. I would like to create a shade using vintage and Julia's gray. More vintage or more Julia's gray? Half and half, roughly speaking. Today I am taking advantage, since all the colors are available. I use them, but you at home can too, with just the 125 mil cans. This can here. Okay, that's enough. I'm going to cuddle this can here tonight. I'll remove the tape I put on the edge to avoid getting it dirty. I'll close it and I'll use it for a lot of other projects because it was a 215 liters can that was already open. And as you can see, I used it for a lot of things. So listen, vintage, you said it's about 50-50. Let's try one spoon and two. It's okay like that. Excellent, two tablespoons. And then we add a bit of water as it needs to be a veil. Do you like it, Alessandra? I like it. All this to create tortorelle. This is to say that our colors are really special because you combine them and make others that already exist. It also reminds me of taffeta, I must say. But we created it by combining two colors we have already opened. Beautiful. So listen, is it thick enough now or would you like to add more water? Let's start. Sure. Yes. Okay, so you said we will need a big brush. I offer you the margarita. I like it. The width is 150. Yes. It's the widest one we have. The other is the 120. So let us see how you use it and what you do. Of course. Ale, do you like the thickness? Perfect. We made it nice and fluid so it doesn't cover too much the stencil you made this morning. Yes, because Magic Wall is super covering. Look, let's do this. Since you have to decide on the right veiling, you keep a bucket of water nearby, a well wrung out cloth, but damp, if you want a spray or two, because it depends a lot on the wall you have and how hot it is. And so you can decide. I'm starting and you tell me if it's okay what I'm doing. Yes. 
We always work in a highly localized manner. We don't go over the entire wall with a glaze and then sponge it. Piece by piece, that is, a small piece like this, and then, without waiting for it to dry, we go with the cloth to gently remove a bit, but also to evenly spread our color. Remember also that she is doing a magic wall wash on a magic wall base, so it's obviously quite smooth, right? If we had done this magic wall wash on a wall that was perhaps in lime or another paint, it would perhaps absorb more, wouldn't it? So we should have diluted even more. The interesting thing, and you can see it while it's still wet, is that it has a different absorption on the wall and where we have put the plaster together with the wall. Why did we make this step before? Because we wanted to create this effect afterwards with the veiling. If we had worked only with the wall painted with the wall, we would not have had this difference in color and absorption. Here I did it. You can see it. She's already removed it. Notice how beautiful it is in spots with there is texture and where it's smoother. It's very particular, this point. Again, you can see it very well. Where she has already removed, you see how it becomes lighter. The texture is very beautiful because in some places you can see it, whereas in other places there it's smoother. Working on small areas anyway allows us to connect without letting it dry, without showing the joints. That's right. And if the cloth is too full of paint, you rinse it off in the bucket we have prepared nearby. Don't wait to take the bucket, you might forget. The glazing is finished and almost dry. Now let's finally add something personalized, some detail that makes our wall truly unique. Not that it's not good this way, it's very good as it is, but if we really want to give it that personalized touch, we need to add a little something. I have already prepared two colors, vintage and clear sand. I slightly diluted them to make the brush flow better. Now I'll show you what I'm doing. Let's add some gentle touches of light to the top right part of our painting. We have already done other tutorials where we explain the theory of lights and shadows well. You can go see them in detail. In this case, we will simply do something like this. Let's paint the lights in the upper part, to the right. We can also avoid doing it everywhere, also because we have made a fairly rough stencil, so we don't necessarily have to go and place lights everywhere. This work will definitely enrich our stencil and make it less anonymous. I am going to work on both the part that I had painted with green and the part that I had painted pink. See how much it changes with just a few touches of color? Voila. After completing the step, I move to the second color, vintage, and will not create a proper shadow, that is the stencil shadow, but a cast shadow, meaning the shadow my subject casts onto the background it rests on. I will always stay on the left, because obviously if I have the lights on the right, I can never have the shadows on the right. The shadows will always be on the left. And I'll do this movement. You see, I intentionally lean on the other arm. This is because after a while, the wrist gets slightly tired. So, especially if you are at the beginning, to make the work lighter and also to have a steadier hand, you can lean on the other wrist. This work definitely helps to give three-dimensionality to our drawing, but also to make it personalized, because obviously each of us has a different hand and manual skill. So by doing this work, it will no longer be a mass-produced job, but it will definitely be a unique work. I have completed the painting touch-up. Now we are going to add one last touch that will really make this wall look antique. With the fine sandpaper, the fine grit abrasive sponge, 
I will do these movements. I am doing this both where there is painting and where there is not. In some areas I will press harder with my hand so as to create more wear. In some others I will keep it lighter so as to have only a slight abrasion. The final result should not be homogeneous everywhere. This will help make the effect even more realistic. I can suggest every now and then you step away from the wall and take a look at the final effect. Now I'll step away too, I look at it and then carry on. This makeover is finished. You know I have two sentences I always say. Good morning, channel friends, and this makeover is finished. Today there's no need to set it, it's already done. This wall does it all by itself. It is very beautiful. I hope it will also show up on video because live it is really beautiful, but I'm sure now Franco will come up with the camera and show all the details that came out at the end when you sanded. Yes, right? And the sanding really brought out the texture that we created initially. I really like it. I'm glad you also showed how to use different tools like the spatula to spread the putty initially to make it textured and how you created this wall in two hours, right? Two hours out of everything. A work people can easily do on a rainy Saturday afternoon when they're home and bored. It's a perfect work. It's not difficult, but you have to follow a few guidelines. Always remember that we have already done a tutorial in fact, maybe even more than one, to teach well how to create lights and shadows. At the end of this video, you'll find the link to the other two videos, so you can look for them and watch them carefully. You'll see a playlist with Alessandra on our YouTube channel for her entire tutorial collection so that you won't miss any. Okay, perfect. If you truly want to learn her art live though, you have to be willing to make some sacrifices and go to a retailer. A very ugly sacrifice where you will eat, laugh, joke, and learn, right? And have fun. And have fun. So please look for Alessandra at Magic Paint Retailers, where you can follow one of her courses focused on manual skills like leaves, lights, shadows, and marbles. Bouncing. Many courses. Many courses. Look for her. Where can they look for you? They can find me on Instagram and Facebook, Alessandra Eliatera Dombra. And they can find you on my group, I Love Magic Paint, where there are all the Italian retailers who post the flyer with their courses. If you can't find the nearest course, post on the group, tag her, Alessandra Eliatera Dombra. Where should I look for you? How do I know if you're coming near my house? Go to the website, www.magicpaint.it, in the retailer section. They are all divided by region and province, so you can't go wrong. Indeed, we are good. Extremely good. See you at the next makeover. Goodbye!